and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. You're onto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Let's lift our hands and just bless the name of the Lord and thank Him for the beginning of a new week, opportunity to experience new victories. Father, we honor you. Thank you. Visit us again today. Open our eyes. And we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. By the power of revelation, give us access into the riches of our redemption. Grant us access into the unsearchable riches of Christ. What he accomplished for us in his death and resurrection. Cause us to take advantage of these things and be able to walk in dominion over all the powers of the enemy. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Let me say this just before I begin. These are the seven powers that Satan is wielding. The power of deception, power of corruption, sin. And these are the seven things troubling the nations of the world. First is power of ignorance. How do you deal with it? At the natural education, at the spiritual revelation. Power of corruption is sin. Uh, no country prospers until this is taken care of. In the spiritual is what the, the death of Christ takes care of. You know, what's the cure for the power of corruption? The cross, the cross, the cross. In, in the natural, it is values and ethics that bring corpses in a nation. Power of demons. What's the cure for this? The authority of the believer. The authority of the believer. In the natural, submission to principles. Submission. We are now the ones in charge, not demons anymore. Do you know there are people who are not born again, but a witch cannot bite their child. A witch cannot have bought their baby in the womb. A witch cannot do that. Do you know that Satan does not have uh, that kind of leverage over even the so-called people who are not born again, there are still people he can't do certain things to. Because there are also laws, principles that God created that if you obey, it keeps you from certain harm. Let me give you an example. You know when planes started crashing, crashing, we say it's demon in Nigeria. When last did you hear a Japanese plane crashing? Are they as religious as we are? Because there are basic principles like issues about servicing your vehicle, issues about checking. There are laws that they establish in the aviation industry. There's what is called quality management standards. That even if somebody is not safe, but he can adhere to those standards, because their standards are, set, are actually created by God Almighty. If they adhere to it, it will now take Satan to appear to really do supernatural before he can cause. It's true. So, um, number four, the power of sicknesses. Divine healing, divine health, the covenant of health is the cure. Why in the natural, the laws of health? There are natural laws of health like dieting, exercising, and all of that. The power of lack. The supernatural cure is the blessing. The covenant of wealth is the cure. Why in the natural? There are also laws of wealth. There are laws like invest, all those knowledge. 
Financial literacy is the cure in the natural. The power of Adam. The power of Adam. You know what it is? Luke chapter 4. All this power, that's it's called power over the nations. It's power over society. The power of Adam is when Adam fell, Adam was the god of this world or was given dominion mandate. Satan collected it. So Satan is known as the god of this world. And he's not ruling only one country, he's ruling all the nations. So at the temptation, he showed Jesus all the kingdoms of this world and said, All these powers have been delivered to me. If you bow to me, I'll give it to you. The power of Adam in the natural is political power. The church too should not leave it for the devil and his children. In the spiritual, it's called kingdom power, the dominion mandate. The dominion mandate. This is what some of us are initiating through national transformation. But even if you don't do it through governmental platform, use non-governmental platform, you can change. You can go into public service without being a public officer. That's what non-governmental organization is all about. That's what social enterprise is all about. That you can begin to affect society, help to stop Satan's work. If you can grab political power, grab it, you can limit how much Satan is operating in a country by that, in a community by that. That's why we have to reclaim the traditional institutions in our villages in all that. If I ask you now, the early church, most of the powers that Satan used, it, it, it couldn't use deception on them, they had light. It couldn't use corruption on them. It couldn't use demons, they were operating the authority on them. It couldn't use sickness, they would stop him. It couldn't use lack, people were giving anywhere, you know, but he used the power of Adam. He used Emperor Nero. He used those men in government. So to persecute them till he dead, they killed a number of them, even though it was later in their early life. That's what God is teaching. That's why that church that went to Rome, finally subdued the Roman Empire and collected that Adamic power back. Government is a very powerful thing, you know. Government is what God gave to Adam. And that's what he gave you. He said, you are kings and priests. How was each of these destroyed? And how was the mandate transferred back to us? You know, someone was telling me, he said, didn't you see that when Jesus multiplied bread and fish and fed the people, the people wanted to make him king by force that he avoided it. I said, can't you understand? Don't you have sense? If he collects the kingdom, then he won't die on the cross because nobody can kill him. Will you go and arrest your president? It would take the law of the government to get him to the cross. He needed the pilot, he needed the Sanhedrin to get him to the cross. If he accepts that without going through the cross, then he has have destroyed. He will, the rest of us cannot test dominion because he has not paid for our redemption. But can't you see that that's what he's coming back to take? That's what he's coming back to take. What is he coming back a second time for? Does he need to go to the cross a second time? What is he coming back for? It's to rule this earth a thousand years. Get your eyes open. Get interested in what is happening in your local government. Open your eyes, my friend. Leave those things in the hand of the devil and his children. When he loses in all the other areas, you have dealt with him, he will find a way to use this one against. And of course, the last, those two, are the, I'm going to be giving attention. I have noticed once you take care of ignorance, knowledge, these are the last two that the church needs to understand, the power of death. We're going to deal with it. No devil, no demon, no wizard, no witch has right to remove one second from your lifespan. We'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. But this is where I see a lot of challenge in the church in Africa, because we kept the church in Africa in the deliverance phase. Power of death, power over death. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from what? The law of sin and death. We will get into that. We will get to that. Law of sin and death. The, wage, the wages of sin is what? Death. The law of sin and death. The soul that sinned, it shall what? Die. So, what gave death the power is that there is a, 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 a constitution, a legal provision in the law that empowers it to kill people. 
So what Jesus did, that he first repelled that law. Number two, he destroyed sin by giving you a gift of righteousness. And by that, he freed you from the dominion of death. And it needs to be explained and taught so that people understand because nothing in the kingdom works without revelation. You don't understand. Like, eh. And then somebody finishes hearing me. He goes in the night. Somebody is looking for blood in the street. He decides to attack that daughter of Zion. And it comes in the night. Eh, 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 something was trying to choke you. They are putting the revelation to test to see if you really know what you know. Fire with your authority the same way you have, you would do it if it's sickness or any other thing. You will sit there and say, hey, I, I thought they said, I thought they said they would be delivered for death. So look at this, it's happening to me. Oh. You can say, Father, into your hand, I commend me my spirit and die. Die. Join them in heaven. But you can quote. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, that through death, that he might destroy him that had the power of death and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. He says, Satan, take your hand off. And we are going to get to it because the last thing I want to do on that is raising the dead. That's the next thing that you have to start doing now. It's as simple as healing headache. There's no big deal in it. It's as simple as healing headache. So have you done it? Yes. Not once, not twice. I say it's as simple as healing headache. There are all the things that Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. So how did God destroy this? Through the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. He destroyed it through the gift of righteousness. By overturning the power, the sting of death is sin. By overturning it, by bringing a gift of righteousness. How did he accomplish this? I think I need to, even if it's one scripture on this, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Even if it's one scripture. We'll get back to it later. By one man's offense, death reigned by one. Now, but much more now. Those who receive what? There are three words you need to underline. The first is grace. What did grace do to disarm the law? To repel the constitution. The second is the gift of righteousness. What did righteousness do? To repel the sting of death, which is sin. Those that receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in what? In life by one Jesus. Go, go back. Let's start from 12. By one man, sin entered into the world. Is that one clear? And death came by sin. And so death passed upon all men because all have sinned. Verse 13. Until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is what? Have you seen all the elements combining to give Satan your power he's exercising? The law specify what if you do, you die. So because of that, anyone that does, Satan gains the up, up. He just executes punishment for a, even a law he did not create. Check the first one. The law is, you shall not eat this tree. For in the day you eat it, what will happen? But if that law was not there, if it was removed, and Adam went and ate that tree, would there be any consequence? So how did death come by sin? How did sin come? Because somebody violated what God said not to do. Violation. Sin is transgression of the law. Death is the consequence of sin. So the, in this equation, you find how death is disarmed. Sin is violation of God's law, transgression of God's law. Death is the penalty after you do that. So question. What do you think made Jesus to repel the law on the cross, to nail it to the cross? Why do you think he did it? You know, you have to understand why Jesus died. He went after everything from the legal ground that gave Satan all the power he was exercising. He first had to use legal ground to remove him from government. 
I think I need to show you this scripture. I'm sure you have heard me say it before. You can look at it again. Keep that part, but John chapter 12, verse 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall what? Look at the God of this world, Adam's power. He's talking about how we are going to collect it. Now shall the prince of this world be what? They look at the next verse. If I be lifted up from the earth, what will happen? I will draw all men. What is being lifted up? He's talking about dying on the cross. Hanging on the cross, dying there. That's how he's going to eject Satan out of the system. Now, now, not tomorrow. Not when I return the second time. Shall the prince of this world, the God of this world, be removed from government? The devil and I know that he may be the president over the unbelievers association. He knows that I'm not his citizen and I'm not his subject. He knows and I know. The question is, do you know? He knows that he may still have a territory he dominates. And these are by choice, those people who are still remaining in darkness. That's why he keeps them from knowing. Because every dictator is against information. They monitor the media. They monitor. They don't want certain knowledge because people can overthrow his government. They have certain level of knowledge. That's the truth. Dictators fear information. Freedom of information is their greatest nightmare. Their worst nightmare. They manipulate the mind of the society they control. That's how they can keep them. So he knows that there is still unbelievers association in this world. And he is the ogre. But has he been removed from government? Yes. Any of them that knows the truth tomorrow can walk away from that place. There is nothing he can do about it. Any of them that knows the truth can walk away. You see this thing they tell them in Oboni? If you leave, you will die. Any of them that is taught this truth leaves. There is nothing you can do. If you try to go after him, you can close down all the leaders of that court. Before, such thing cannot be challenged. If you go to a village now, where they tell you, ah, if you do this one, the oracle will kill you. Anybody that knows the truth that is in power with this does the whole thing. There is nothing the oracle can do. Before, it cannot be challenged. But the one that had the power of death was Satan before. He could kill anybody he likes. Now, Jesus has collected the keys of death and hid it from him. He just has this control over this, his association that he has been able to maintain. And our job is to go and enlighten the people. Go back to Romans chapter 5. For by one man's offense, sin entered into the world and death passed to all men because all have sinned. Verse 13, until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not recorded or imputed where there is no law. Okay. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, which is the figure of him who is to come. And this is also another powerful thing. I don't have time. That death as powerful as death was, didn't have power over the children of Israel. No, a witch can kill a Jew. A witch can kill a Jew, for example. They hired a wizard one time to come and cause them. He couldn't cause them. He said they cannot be caused. He said it. That there is no divination against Jacob or incantation against Israel. New Testament, too. If you watch and they leave 120, they leave 180 something, 170 something. They finish their lifetime just by using the blood of animal because this thing is about penalty of sin, death. So they uh, let animal pay the penalty and preserve the life. God gave them in Levitical system that the blood is given for atonement for soul. As, that's the price for your life. You offer it the person that is guilty escapes, the animal bears the penalty. I think that's probably why of all the living creatures, God made these other ones and gave them in the natural, the same thing that is flowing in your vein in the natural. That's why. I've asked God two questions about animals. I used to ask, does the spirit of animals go up or go down? After that one was cleared. Animals have soul. Human beings have spirit beings. Then the other question was, 
Why is it that the animals don't speak? Why can't they speak? The Lord said, first of all, I hope you know that they can. That they have vocal cords. But I allow them to just sing and blare and make all those signals so they can communicate among us. But they can't make words. I said, why? He said, because the earth was created by words. The earth is controlled by words. The earth is sustained by words. If I give animals power to speak, then dominion mandate is not only with human beings. You can be challenged any day. You can say this when they can counteract it. Just to make sure that we are the ones having dominion. And it's the same thing with when I ask them about soul and spirit. Does the animal's spirit go up or go? He said they don't have spirit because dominion is a component of the spirit man, the spirit being. It's that deity part of God that he knows, that carries that. So he said, but they have soul. They have soul. Then he said, the other one is words. The reason I didn't allow them to speak is because of this. I hope you saw, saw those times that animals act with superior intelligence. One, when he was carrying a prophet, he spoke. He was seeing angels. The other time was when the animals were carrying the Messiah. Another donkey. The third time was when they, they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant. When those donkeys with their cart was carrying the Ark of the Covenant back from Philistine, they became intelligent like human beings. They knew their way and they could find their way. To, of course, the, the, the gods of the Philistines had already told their people, if these animals find their way, we know that God is behind this. If they don't find, they start moving around like ordinary good. They see farm, enter farm to go and know that there is, there is nothing in it. But the moment the anointing came on their back, so you see these creatures can know the anointing. They became intelligent. They found their way, taught like human beings. So there is an element God withdrew from them. That's why they are beasts. It's the spirit dimension. Because when he did it under, under Balaam, the creature started speaking fluently and started talking like a sensible person. Why are you flogging me like this? All these years I've been serving you. Have I ever disobeyed you? But these three times I dodge. Is it all your life that I'm trying to save? Maybe you have no sin. There is an angel here with a sword drawn that has been trying to get you killed. I'm the one that has saved your life this time. And when the, the animal said that, God opened the eyes of the blind prophet and he now saw. That's why animals too can be possessed. I hope you know that one already. And then, when the spirit dimension came on that one, they, they, and for a season after, the Holy Spirit withdrew. But they breathed that in and it became a component. There is now a spirit in man, the inspiration, the breath of the Almighty gave them understanding. We are not beasts now. But you can be reduced to a beast though. Because all they need to do is tamper with that third dimension of you. They did it in the book of Nessie. They did it to him. And if you see people cutting all these things they do during war, you know that they are not healthy people. They are not normal people. Cutting human beings. You know, a man that is not saved is dead spiritually. It doesn't mean he doesn't have human spirit. But there is something that is not functioning. But you can imagine blood of animal. So I said, okay. The other thing is this blood thing, sacrifice thing. What is the purpose of giving animals souls? He said, because the soul is in the blood and it can be used for atonement. So once you pick an animal that is still sin pure, especially they have a particular specification they give them for sacrifice. You don't go and keep pick a bull that has killed a human being or, or done something. No. They pick them within their infancy and all of that. Once you pick an animal like that and sacrifice him, his blood shifts away consequences. He bears the penalty. Sometimes they even lay hands on them and transfer the sin, confess the sin. He bears the penalty for the man so that the man who did it escapes. This revelation was what God gave to Adam the moment he fell. So he slaughtered the first beast, covered him with the blood, and God slaughtered the first sacrifice. And he slaughtered the last one last one was his son and you know that's why somebody said that is the lamb of god that what take it away the sin of the world 
So he told them, you don't eat blood because blood is life. There's life in it. The soul life is in the blood. And it's the purpose for creating blood is so they can be used for atonement. Blood is somebody's life. I heard the sound of your brother's blood crying to me from the ground. So that alone suspended dominion of death from the people that Moses brought out. And if you notice, from Adam and all of those people that had revelation of that blood covenant down to Abraham, down to, they all had this dominion. They operated in longevity. Verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For through the offense of one man, many be dead. Much more by the grace of God and the gift of gift by grace. You have to study grace. Let me give you three new assignments now. You have to study this thing called grace. You need to study this thing called grace. You need to understand it all for your good. Second, you need to study righteousness. I'm not talking about ethics and values, which is the aspect of righteousness we teach in National Transformation. I'm talking about the redemptive righteousness, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Ethics and values are the righteousness of the law. Morality, you know those ones. That's not what I'm talking about. You will not find victory over death by studying those things. Because you're already a sinner, whether you are the one advocating for the highest standard of ethics in Nigeria or not. What sets you free is the righteousness that came through the death and resurrection of Christ, the free gift that he gave to the church. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's why you can't find dominion over death if you don't operate in grace, if you operate under the law. You can't find dominion over death if you don't operate in righteousness, if you operate under the, on, under the law. You won't find it. You won't. The third thing I want you to study is the divine nature. Grace, grace, grace. Offense of one man caused many to be dead. But now, the grace of God, the gift by grace, which is by one man, has abounded unto many. Continue, verse 16. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. See this one gift, it was only one sin cause everybody to pay. But this free gift, one gift, is taking care of so many offenses, so many things, atrocities we have committed. One, one, one man's obedience takes care of all of them. <laughs> Verse 17. For if by one man's offense they trend, they trend by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace. Take note of that. And the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus. Look at the next verse. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift has come upon all men unto justification of life. Yes, continue. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. This is the one I wanted to say, righteousness. By one man's disobedience, many were made what? How many of you were there who joined Adam to eat the apple? You were not. But he became a sinner because he was representative of the human family. All of us were in him. The same way now, so by the obedience of one shall many be made what? Righteous. The same way you were not involved when Adam ate, but the consequence came on you. You were not also there when Jesus passed the test. But now the benefit is yours. I say now the benefit is yours. I say now, righteousness is yours. For he has made him to be sin. Who knew no sin? That you might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's why there is something I taught on assurance of salvation. That thing needs to get into our spirit. Needs to get into us. 
Even as I was teaching him, some were uh, sending me, take, Pastor, do you really mean that? You know, because the, the, the other side has been the normal thing for a very long time. By one man's obedience, many shall be made righteous. I'm glad I'm one of them. I'm one of the many. I'm one of them. Not few, not few. Dominion over death is not a gift. It's something I have been purchased for everybody. Many, many, many. I'm one of them. <laughs> if you come operate in righteousness, you can operate, you can operate in mastery over death. Sting of death is same, my dear. Jesus destroyed that tail of the scorpion. He destroyed it. Oh, death, where is thy victory? Oh, oh grave, where is oh, oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? I showed you Zachariah the other time by the blood of thy covenant. I have released all your prisoners who are kept in a pit without water. And I said, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. He said, death, I will be your destruction. And repentance will be hid from my eyes. That's when I destroy death, I will not repent about it. I love the God Almighty. Is a, is a, is a way he, is a way he talks, and there is a way. Actually, you need to learn his language. If you want to be a man of faith, you have to learn his language. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will ransom them from the power of death. He said, "Oh, death! I, God Almighty, will be your destruction. And when I do it, repentance will be hid from my. I will repent." Like he said, I have sworn I will not repent. Thou art a priest forever. Hallelujah. After the order of Mekhese. That's how he said the defeat and destruction of death will be without repentance. You have to understand what he went to the cross to do. I think, you know, um, you come back to verse 19, but Hebrews 2 verse 14 and 15. Look at, look at. Look at verse 14 first. Okay, for as much as the children are partakers of flesh and why did Jesus come to take human body, you know, this flesh and blood thing? He also likewise took part in the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Next, next verse. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime, what? Subject. It's something that blew my mind about all these apostles. I read Philippians chapter 1. You can put it up. Paul, where he talks about, I'm in between these two opinions, to be present or to be absent. And he said, I now choose which one to be. These men decide, they are now the one that is in charge, deciding when to go or when not to go. He's now on the power of the believer. No more Satan takes anybody. Look at Satan hard. Everyone say hard. Hard. Revelation 1, 18 says Jesus has. Philippians chapter 1. Verse 23. For I'm in strength. That's, you know, between two, two. Having a desire to depart. And to be with Christ, which is far better. Verse 24. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Verse 25. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for the furtherance of your faith. You are raising a church now. You are training the people. You have not finished. He said, I'm always in between two. I have this desire. I feel like I'm true. I need to go. You know, one day the guy called Timothy said, I fought a good fight of it. I finished my course. It's time to go. I watched Peter, the same thing. You read it in the book of Peter. He said, the Lord Jesus has shown me that it's time to put off this body. The man is old. He said, Peter, you know, he's now very old. The same thing with Paul. He writes to me, he said, Paul the aged. Shipwreck, he had how many days and nights inside the sea? He comes out. How did the human being start being fish now? And even if you survive inside, you see, what about the sharks? What about the whales? What about all those creatures? Some, if they sting you like this, 
One time they stoned him. And he laid there dead. The people left. The dead man got up. And went to the next city preaching. He didn't say I need one month to sabbatical. Next day he was preaching home. How do you explain that? Because the Bible says a disciple is not greater than his master. But when a disciple is fully trained, he becomes like his master. The master said, no one takes my life from me. I have power to lay it down. I have power what? Now, in John chapter 17, his brother's family, he was having some, he said, no, my time is not yet. When my time is come, I go there and do. But you can't, it's not something anybody takes from me. Nobody can take it without my will. Nobody can take it without my will. Go back to verse 23. Maybe we should even read 22. I think he started at 21. For me, to live is Christ. To die is what? When you have finished your assignment, you can talk like this guy. When you have not, dying is waste. If you have not fulfilled your purpose, dying is what? Capital waste. Serious waste. You wasted God's investment and wasted a lot. To live is Christ. To die is gain. If I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. So, so the more I stay here, I can increase what I can do for God. Get more harvest, get more souls saved, get more accomplished for the kingdom of God. I live in the flesh, ah, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet, what I shall choose, I don't know. So it's a choice. It's a choice. No more, nobody knows oh, the day you go, who told you that. It's a choice. Even Martin Luther King Jr., he was the one that preached it. He said, I've been to the mountain top. I've seen the promised land. Then he said with his mother, he doesn't bother anymore. That longevity is there in the Bible, is there. But that this time around doesn't. That I know that we as a people, will get to the land that God has promised, but I will not go over. Now, why do people do that? If somebody realizes that his death will cause the purpose of God to, some people willingly, that's how Jesus Christ willingly laid it down, because he saw the purpose of that. If not, if he had nothing to do with redemption, what is the use? So the Bible said sometimes, you see the righteous in the book of Hebrew, not accepting deliverance that they might have a better resurrection. Because there is a big promise too. There is a heavy reward for those who laid down their life for the cause of Christ. But remember the difference. Not uh, uh, Okada knocked you down at Ojota. Satan uses deception. He uses distortion of truth. He uses ignorance. He uses illiteracy then he uses propaganda. He knows how to amplify fear. The bad things, just amplified. Everybody is afraid. That's, that's how he operates the power of fear. The power of fear is one of the deadliest power. The reason I didn't make it a, an eight, whatever is that, it goes with how he manipulates you know, information. He distorts information to create that. Cripples people. Some people can't take first step, even in their purpose cripples them, demobilizes them, paralyzes them with fear. If we live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet, what shall I choose? I don't even know. Somebody said, whichever way I win, if he is to go, I go and be with the Lord. If I stay here, I do more work. I have increased the amount of people I am reaching. He's writing this for Rome. For Rome. Hmm? He's writing this for Rome. A man that has reached a whole Asia Minor, even reached a large part of Africa, North Africa, and reached uh, Europe, and he's still talking like this. Verse 23. I'm in a strait between the two. That's going or stay. Having a desire to depart, to be with Christ, which is far better. Yes, verse 24. 
nevertheless to abide in the flesh is more profitable for you verse 25 and having this confidence because he wants to help more people i know that i shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and the joy of you i want i want people to grow so i will stay that's how you should it should be with you these believers that's the rights, our rights of redemption. That's the seven to one mastery over death. That's what the guy is demonstrating. That's what he's demonstrating. Jesus made it clear that he defeated death by rising. Second thing he, he did to make it clear, lest somebody doubt it, is that he went and unlock, unlocked all the Old Testament sets, unlocked all of them, and then gave them 40 days to display and parade themselves on earth. He opened the grave, so it wasn't spirit resurrection or his body. So if his own resurrection was not bodily, you can't tell me he conquered death physically. If he didn't open graves, then this man is just ghost appearing. No. As he was showing himself to people, they were Jerusalem had commotion for 40 days. To make it clear, 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 clear. So when you finish living your life, there are two ways to go. The Bible said, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die, but we shall all what? Be changed. One way is you finish living your life, you decide, go like any of this. You can actually surrender your neck. Let him kill you for something. Find one cause. Maybe nobody is bold enough to talk about. You know that it because it's a very dangerous thing. It could even be a political emancipation of or something, maybe like a resource con something that is hot, but you know that justice needs you carry your head and put. You know it can take you. You put it so that you can get the highest reward in heaven. Put it there. When they arrest you, you said I have no apology. Die for a cause. You've lived out your full life. You've fulfilled your purpose. Die for a cause. I think maybe if you die, they bury you in your village. That's honorable death. No, the most honorable death is martyrdom. In case you don't know. That's, that's the most honorable death. But for something like Martin Luther, something that will save the generation after you. You can go. So we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. That's they have two options. But because there is dominion over there, too, some won't die at all. They just go like Elijah or Enoch. Go like Elijah or Enoch. Others, which will be the majority. You know, I think I should say it this way. When we finally get to heaven, there will be more people who got there with our death than those who get there through death. Yeah. Write that record. You will see what I'm saying. More people will get there without passing through death at all than those who went through death. And it's very simple. We shall not all die. We shall all be changed. There are two ways. He said, for the trumpet shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who remain shall be cut up. So the cut up method will transport more people than the, the dead in Christ method. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The reason is because even as at the time Paul and Co preached, and even till you know recently, beginning of 1900. All the death in Christ combined are not up to sometimes the number of people coming to Christ in one year these days. I don't think you heard what I said. Do you know that all the death in Christ for the past 2,000 years? <laughs> it's true. The people coming in response to 
who will be translated are going to be more than those who will be resurrected. Whichever way, the important thing is that both of them triumphed. Both of them triumphed. I'm almost through, so you can as well rest. I'm fine. We shall not all sleep. The Bible doesn't even use that word dead when it talks about us in Israel. Yeah, but they that sleep in Christ shall he bring with him. He's talking about the second coming of Christ. So he says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. A trumpet shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we who remain shall be caught up. <laughs> shall be caught up to be with Christ. Now, I want to end it this way. If an Old Testament man, Elijah, was caught up, and some prophet long before Moses, just because he walked with God, was caught up, he, was, he went. Those who want it in the 21st century, who target that can have it. And I'll tell you, for a very simple reason, not only because Jesus paid for this debt, but because the scripture said, by faith, Enoch. Everyone say Enoch. Enoch. By faith, Enoch was translated. So if it was by special favor, we know it's just something God did for one person, he can't do. But anything that is by faith is available to every other person that believes in. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Now you tell me, ah, why are more people not getting it? Because they don't believe it for themselves. He said, why are more people not getting it? Because faith comes by hearing. It's not being preached. There was a time 99% were living in poverty. The few who started preaching it, the rest of the church attacked them. But today now, he used to say as, as poor as what? Church right. Today now, they now think we have money. There was a time when almost every service there has to be one special prayer request for one brother that is dying in the hospital. Then one brother that is that is almost at the point of death. And then we'll ask the Lord, you know, to teach him some lessons that he needs to learn. Make sure he learns all the lessons because the Lord is using this to chastise him to make him more humble. Then we'll pray those prayers. It used to be the order of the day. Most of the testimony will be, ah, Last week, Satan almost killed me. The devil was after me again. And now I lost my and all that. It only was a normal testimony. I, I, I met this one. It's not far. This was not mine in the church. Church I grew up in, it was three benches. One, whatever. You talk about mushroom. was a store. And these are not big stores. It's this kind of small kiosks on the roadside. We put three benches. That was service. That was church. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed by faith in all. And you see, faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Each of these seven things that is not taught, people will keep suffering till they know the truth. When they know the truth, they know what is there, then they start walking in it. They start walking in it. Dominion over death has two sides. One is longevity. 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 As you live out your full time, there you go. There is even another one, another side, which most people don't have faith, boldness to even talk about. Some don't even understand it. And I want to stop it. It's the one Paul was praying about in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 3. That I might know him, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, be made conformable unto his death. Then he concludes, he said, it by enemies that I might attain what? Of the dead. He was not praying for rapture. He was praying that he will go like Elijah or go like Enoch. That he, because Jesus had taken care of, that he can now finish, even go to heaven, join his master. He wrote, he said, I know a man in Christ. Whether in the body or out of the body, he goes to the third heaven. You don't have to go there only out of the body. You can go there in the body. Enoch did. Elijah did. 
And it looks like Moses also did because nobody found his body. People searched, have searched. But they said God took him on that mountain and, and, and buried him. Okay, where did you bury him now? And then the day of transfiguration, to discuss the resurrection, he appears there with, with Elijah. There is more to Moses' death, just like there is more to Elijah's death. Elijah, too, was taken up, and those sons of the prophet decided to go and search everywhere looking for him. Elijah told them he won't find him, but they did. They spent a couple of days. He sent him with Moses. Because they said Michael came to get his body, and, and, and Satan came to get his body. Obviously, his body is not even here. Michael rebuked Satan went we shall not all die we shall all be changed this is what I want to leave in your mind if it's by faith then it's by revelation that's by what you hear that means it's available to everybody anything that is by faith is by grace and it's available to all. It's just a matter of what you hear, what you know. By faith, Enoch walked with God. And it was translated that he should not see death. This death to all men has seen, death is ruling. And this man too sin is Adam's descendant. But by faith, he walked with God in a way that he believed. He believed it and God did it. That might be what you might want to believe for. A better resurrection. That might be what you want to believe for. To attain to the resurrection of the dead. Whichever one, there are roots to it. If you want to believe God to attain to the resurrection of the dead, that you must know the crucified life raw. When Paul said that I might know him, the power of his resurrection, be made conformable unto his what? Death. You need to know that because that's the secret of that one. You have to know the crucified life well to so live such a selfless life that is as if you, you are no more living. It's not Christ that is living his life through you. You can also decide just to go like the patriarchs. The patriarchs finish. I've shown you the three ways. Oh, the patriarchs, they will live out their full life. After living out their full life, you know, the only thing you do is that you age. But you age healthily. You age beautifully. You live out your full life. You just grow like corn. You just get it gets to a particular age. You don't have as much fluid in your skin like before. So you just, just dry up a little more, wear out like corn, but remain healthy, remain strong. You are 90, you are, your eyes are still clear. You don't read anything you want to read. Your brains are intact. Your bones are strong. You move around, you do what you and when you finish, you say, Lord, let thy servant depart in peace. I've seen everything you promised me. I've seen this thing. You call your children and bless them. And give them word for their future, their own generation. You go. Say, into thy hand I commend my spirit. You go. Or, after you have finished your assignment, finish what you're called to do. You go and give your life for one worthy cause. There are a lot of causes. There are a lot of them. All. There are a lot of them. And sometimes the death of the advocate sparks off the change that is required. That's why we said all unjust suffering is redemptive in nature. All. Scripture said the same way Jesus laid down his life for us, we should be willing to lay it down for one cause that will affect people or the other, for the brethren. 
you can decide to take that life. One mission field that is very dangerous. Plant churches there. They say they are arresting people. It's interior China. You go there. They arrest you. You come out. You continue. They arrest you again. You come out. Finally, they say, ah, it's, it's firing squad. He said, better self. But I have succeeded. Because if they shed the blood of the sin on that land, then the whole doors that hold the gospel blows down. But yet the man has also gone. He has gone to his sword, but he has also left a major legacy on it. Are you people getting what I'm saying? The third option, you believe God that you attend the resurrection of the dead. You believe God for it. There's nothing wrong with believing it. Because what you believe is what you become. God dealt with sin by paying the price on the cross and giving us a gift of righteousness. He dealt with the legality of sin by bringing grace in the place of the law. And he destroyed the law of sin and death by introducing the law of life, spirit of life in Christ. That's the power of endless, what is called the divine nature, eternal life. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If you're having challenge with sickness, it looks chronic, it looks like you had to go and get this. I'll give you this scripture, but this works for everything. Finances, prosperity, health, but I recommend it, especially if you're looking for healing. Get this book. Read it. If you have to read 120 times, read it. Finish that. Finish that. And there will be some scriptures. All the healing scriptures are here that will stand out for you. There is a tape version of it. Sometimes I love the, because hearing is also, you know. But uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. This is it. Anything at all you are looking for, you can use this principle. And you can get it. I've already said it. The ear get, the eye get, the mouth get. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my saying. So you see, the ear get is first. The ear get is first. Number verse 21. Let them not depart from thy eyes. The eye get is the second. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Meditation is the third. So if you, and there are scriptures you need to be write out, paste in your rooms, you know, get, if you have movies or something that emphasize them, use it, it's part of the eye gate. Reading is part of the eye gate. Listening is part of the ear gate, using your ear, you know, listening to messages, listening to Bible read, maybe like scriptures on tapes, you know, then uh, then the mouth gate is saying it. Joshua was told you have to keep keep this book of Joshua, not depart from thy mouth. You have to keep saying it. You know, um, thou shalt meditate on it. That one, keep it in the midst of thy heart. For they are life unto those that find them and held to what? Can you see how healing occurs? That's what Matthew chapter 13 said. That if they hear, with their ear and see with their eyes and be converted in their heart, I will heal them. It's called the law of transformation. It works for everything. For they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. It concludes by saying, yes, read the verse 23. It's one of my favorite. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are what? How many of you are filled with the Holy Spirit? You are very sure. What, what does the Bible say about the Spirit? Out of your belly, shall what? What is belly? That's what the Bible calls heart. It's not stomach. It's heart. <laughs> Can I have you say that the spiritual heart is not really located up here? That is here. He said biological heart is the one here. The spiritual heart is here. 
I don't know. It, it looks like it's from that. You know, if you cut legs, the two legs out, the person is still there. You remove the two hands, the person is still there. Whosoever lives in your house lives between here and here. I don't think you heard what I said. There are people with our hands at all. And they, they are there. And they are alive. And the complete man is there inside. Them. There are people with our legs, like Nick from Australia. And they are there. And you can actually cut it off from human beings and put it, just treat them well. And they'll be fine. The man will still be there. And the spirit will not be amputated. Cut the legs, he will still be there. But whosoever lives in your house, between your waist and your head, what you do here can be deadly. That's why bulletproofs are not built for those other side. So I went back and checked my Bible. My Bible said, okay, the human spirit, God said, you have caged me with bones and you have covered me with sinew before he covered him with flesh. That the first thing, like a person in a prison, he was caged with iron bars, bones. So I was checking what part is really here. Then he said he used sinew. These very hard tissues. Then after that, he now covered with flesh. Then put skin. And then connected in such a way that you can't live easily until life is taken. You put what they call silver cord to tie the thing. So you don't just breathe like this and you go. Uh -uh. You have to break the silver cord. Then with one breath, the man leaves. When you break the silver cord, he can open his mouth and jive. I, I also noticed that all the seven exits from which the spirit leaves the body are all between here and here. Some men, they just die like this. What you see is tears. They just shed tears. They will come down. Then that eye is set. The guy jive. He just jive. Have you been around somebody who is dying? I think it's a good experience for you to have. You see how he's shaking his head? Stop fearing death. That's why it looks like baptism. Some of them have had baptism. They didn't get the message. When you were buried, they are telling you you have already died. You are now resurrected to newness of life. Death has no more dominion over you. Sin has no more dominion over you. Satan has no more dominion over you. For he that is dead is free from sin. Those are people who, are too, who truly understand Christianity. They don't fear anybody. They preach the message they are given. They don't fear. They don't. They do the assignment. John chapter 7, verse 6. Jesus said to them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. Anyway, let me, let me tell you what I've learned from those men. Like Paul, who said, I've fought a good fight of faith, I've finished my course. In a way, he has lived his life fulfilling his assignment. That life he has lived, fulfilling his assignment, has a lot of reward in heaven. This is how Peter died. Peter also finished his course. He wrote a letter here saying, The Lord Jesus has shown me that the time has come to put off this body. But I will tell you another thing that Jesus told him. Jesus told him because Emperor Nero, Nero wanted him and he escaped to go back to Jerusalem. He was in Rome. Jesus told him, I've kept you to old age. I've protected you. You have been in prison so many times. I will go there and bring you out and all that. But for the work that has been planted in Europe to survive, give your life for it. That whole life he has lived, evangelizing Jerusalem and finally getting to Rome, planting all that he did, which have become the Roman Catholic Church today and all of that, is enough. 
he could have gone back to Jerusalem and then live there and die just being an old man, you know. There's nothing wrong with that. But Jesus told him, if you escape like this, there are a lot of people who are facing persecution, you will discourage. So he went back and surrendered himself, made himself open for them to arrest. Then sent some messages to the brethren, it's time for him to go. So the only reason I said it that way is to get you to be alive long enough. It's a choice, so to be alive long enough to finish what you are called to do. And finally, we have to deal with the abuse of Adamic power. The abuse of Adamic power. This thing, politics, that is for service. Remember, Adam was told, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle. The only one thing that was not included is human beings. That means you are not to abuse your fellow men. You are not to oppress or oppress your fellow human beings. You can control resources, control the, the, you know, the earth, conquer the moon, conquer the stars if you can. But your fellow men, because power is not for oppression, it's for service. Second Adam gave us said that pattern. All this you are preaching on. Many of you need to go into politics. Many of you need to go into politics. What I read for you say reign in life, not reign in death. Those who have received abundance of grace, they give to reign in life. Many of you need to go into government. Then you can also be in public service without going into, you know, can go into public service from a private sector. You can also do it through business. The power, of, the power of God and the principles of God. Which one is more important? <laughs> the principle is as important as the principles. To start saying one is more important than the other. It will be like hen and egg, you know, or seed and tree. Seed and tree. Which one is more important? Which one is more important? He says seed is more important because tree comes from seed. Where does seed come from? Huh? Two sides of the same coin. Principle and principles. Which one is more important? Because the power comes from the person of Jesus. Like we are dealing with last week, the revelation of Jesus. The principles come from the values and the precepts that he taught. I have seen nations that have taken principles and ignored his person. We've seen how, how they are. We've also seen nations like our country that have taken his person and ignored his precepts. We've also seen the, so the issue is that we should push for people to do the full gospel. Simple. Look at America when they had the two. Look at the United Kingdom when they had the two. They were the glory of the nations. Lift up your hands and say, Father, open the eyes of my understanding. Say, I activate the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I ask, Lord, that by the operation of the Holy Spirit, that you give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened. That I might know what is the riches of your inheritance in the sense. I need to know what your investments in me are. Father, I want to know the power that I carry. I want to have a revelation of Jesus Christ. I want to have a revelation of the power of his resurrection. I want to know my authority in Christ. I don't want it to be a head knowledge. I want to know it with conviction so I can function in it. I want to know the power of the spirit that is at work in me. He said you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what I ask or think by the power that, uh, that is at work in me. I want to know these things so that I can walk in divine health, so I can walk in prosperity, so I can walk in dominion over death. Open my eyes. Open my eyes, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are my teacher. You, Jesus sent you here so you can enlighten my understanding. I ask, Lord, that you begin to enlighten my understanding. Take the veil away. Take it away from my mind. Take it away from my eyes. Take it away from my heart. Cause me to walk in transformation. 
that my life be conformed to the image of Christ. And I walk in transformation. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Have you been impacted by this message? Please share your experience with Pastor David Obweli. Email address dominionimagemedia at yahoo.com or call 01-792-6879-0803-435-7959, 0803-590-9900.